I'll make sure Hava watches the video at least the first minute, and then she'll probably get bored after that. Thank you so much. My name is Kif Gallagher. Um, I run Musician Core, and uh, I want to tell you a little bit about our story of prototyping this thing. We're in our fourth year right now. The vision for Musician Core is effectively a musical peace corps. It's to train and place musicians to serve as teachers and mentors and community care workers wherever music can reach, teach, or heal, which obviously is in our schools to keep kids uh, on track and, um, and graduating on time, but it's also in children's hospitals, veterans' hospitals, and communities of all kinds. Um, Anya, thank you very much. You mentioned Musician Corps, I mean AmeriCorps. And uh, how many here have heard of AmeriCorps? Are you all pretty, keep your hand raised if you're familiar with it. Um, well, I'm just going to start there because that's really the start of, uh, well, how many people think it's a, a net positive, just so I know where the, okay, all right, good. <laughs> um, I, I was involved in getting it off the ground. And it was pretty dicey getting it off the ground because there was a lot of competing interests. And effectively, what AmeriCorps was, a lot of folks, well, tell me what, if you could say one word, what is it? Just pop it out. What's AmeriCorps? Service, okay. I thought you might say it's a program, or it's a, but service really kind of goes to the heart of it. And um, what it really was was an enabling system that allowed a formerly fragmented field of many different types of basically youth service programs working in a ton of different areas to create rules for the road and to actually spur demand and innovation and accelerate a feel so that these programs could sort of compete with one another but also learn from one another with um, quality standards and, um, and best practices. And after about 15 years, um, everybody who was part of the service movement, and some, it looks like maybe some of you here in that will remember this, uh, this Time Magazine cover where the case had actually been made. One of the biggest challenges was the case that while well, service is important it's, and it's nice, it's not necessary when the, when the budget uh, is going, is tough. And it's not something that we can really afford in our schools. And AmeriCorps was able to make the case that that service is not only nice, but it's necessary. It's critical to getting things done in all these different key areas in education and health and all these other areas. And the other component of the argument was that everybody ought to be able to serve. And in 2007, when I, three months before I had committed to starting um, Musician Corps myself, or at least going for it, um, and, and Woody Allen said, uh, confidence is, is what you have before you understand the problem. Um, so you'll hear about prototyping and failure for sure. But what I noticed right here was that um, the case, one, we get things done, and two, this is for everybody, all Americans. We got teachers, we got 20-something millennials, we got military guys that seem like they maybe are, you know, have, have some uh, field experience, we got some military brass, we got... Um, a city year guy up there, we got a finance guy, maybe a retiree, but where's the dude or the woman with a guitar or a violin or a cello? No, not all Americans are part of this movement. In fact, uh, one of the largest segments of Americans are people who consider themselves artists. And they're chronically unemployed, but they're also overeducated. And they're eager to serve. And a lot of the most of, of musicians and artists who are out there practicing um, are actually coming from a place of service. And that's what I recognized, was that the desire to serve and the desire to create really come from the same place. And as I started talking about this, I found that there was a lot of resonance for the idea. Aspen Institute said it was one of 10 ideas that would transform communities. And everybody seemed to be into it. And funders were kind of starting to listen to me. I mean, this is over a 20-month period, by the way. So there's a lot of work just kind of getting a feel during that identifying opportunity stage. Um, but um, what I realized was, despite the fact that there was all this evidence around music uh, working to keep kids in school and to have all these outcomes, there was no language for music social impact and music service and music intervention and music for things that are relevant to most Americans. Even though everyone loves music, right now in this budget crisis, and this was in 2008, 2009, when everybody was cutting funds, um, uh, there was no language for arts to really be a part of this movement. Um, so I figured, much like 
AmeriCorps, we needed to go create an operating system for what is really a fragmented field of music and arts driven programs that many of you are familiar with now that I've met some of you and heard that some of you are, have, have run these things that are really transforming lives, not just in this country, but abroad. I mean, just in the areas where we're working or where we have relationships, we've identified over 100 music programs that are getting non-music outcomes in addition to music, which is intrinsically awesome. Um, and, and, and then another 70 globally. Um, so for about six months, we uh, went to Washington and identified musicians who are on Capitol Hill on both sides of the aisle to get around this idea. And we did events at the Kennedy Center, and you just saw Center for American Progress. Um, and ultimately, uh, we were able to get enough folks with the help of, um, does that go back? No, it doesn't. It just doesn't go back. Um, can you go back to the Mike Huckabee, Joe Crowley one? I got to give this guy props. Congressman Joe Crowley, back one, one more to the Mike Huckabee. Um, that man in the front is a congressman from Queens. I don't know if any of you know him, but he's a musician. And he had never identified as part of the Arts Caucus, and he wasn't part of the service movement. But when I was kind of just bopping into different uh, members of Congress's office that I knew were musicians, saying, hey, who wants to do the Musical Peace Corps? Nobody, it didn't resonate with anybody as much as it resonated with Congressman Joe Crowley. And, and he has really been, he was really the guy that kind of carried the ball through for us, ultimately to get musicians and artists into the Kennedy Serve America Act, which was a huge step and the first time music and arts had ever been integrated into as an education strategy, as a service strategy, something other than the NEA, nice, good, nice little arts over here. Um, it was actually part of this big thing. The problem was that there was no funding behind it. When it was in the house, when Joe Crowley had it, we had some money behind it. It was, it was in therapy, it was in hospitals, it was this. But here it got channeled under education specifically. And that left us, as the guys needing to prototype this, which we went ahead and quickly and started doing, um, to compete with some of the biggest national service programs out there under the most competitive area. And we just were one allowable activity. But we went for it. And we went for it in the model of the most successful AmeriCorps programs, um, or the ones that we uh, were most accustomed to, and that I, I frankly had been most accustomed to as being successful. And those were full-time programs um, that were funded for the artists with a living stipend, about twice, a little bit more than twice the minimum wage, plus uh, a modest health care. And you're working full time four days in one or two sites. And then on day five, you come together with your cohort of other musician core artists. And you reflect and you learn and you do press best practices and, um, and leadership development and then group activities. And um, we did it in five cities in our first year because we thought, all right, we, let's get this right and let's show that we can do this in multiple sites. And, um, and in different types of settings, because maybe are we going to do a multi-vertical and be sort of a horizontal model so that we're not just in education? Let's make sure we're in children's hospitals. Let's make sure we're working in veterans' hospitals. Up in this shot right here, you see kids. I think one of the most exciting things about our original prototype was a service learning, project-based learning component where the kids would come out of the school where they typically perform if they're doing music and arts, and their mom and their, and, and, and their dad may or may not show up, but actually having them come out into the community to perform and participate and actually co-create and make music in places that we call hidden audiences and hidden artists. These are people living in isolated communities that don't get arts uh, creative experiences. And we found that young people who had been truant and who uh, had the perfect uh, kind of um, demographic and experience to be future dropouts were getting up at 7 in the morning and we'd pick them up in vans on days that they had off, Veterans Day, Martin Luther King Day, to come and do this music. Because hey, they're playing, they're meeting people, and they're inspired, and they're learning a lot. Senior homes, um, it's amazing to see them come to life in hospice settings. Um, with ELL kids and, and foster youth um, and kids with special needs and really communities of all kinds. And our really our first objective, much like AmeriCorps, was to just make the case, was to, uh, as Jonah was saying, reframe how people understand arts. 
So that, um, of course, the intrinsic value of arts will always be there. But the fact is, is that audiences are dwindling for symphonies, orchestras, and ballets. And in this DIY time, and in this busy, busy time, people just aren't paying 85 bucks to go and sit for 110 minutes um, without looking at their Blackberry um, to see the symphony as much as they used to. So what's interesting is there's, there's this need to reposition arts as what it's always done, design thinking. Not necessarily even STEM thinking, but design, not even thinking, but design, as Jonas said, design doing. Um, that getting to the doing and bringing that into schools was helping us. Seven out of 10 kids who came, high school kids who came through our program said that they wanted to come to school more because of our program. And, um, and two thirds of the healthcare providers at the veterans hospital said that veterans were um, more relaxed, less depressed, and were in less pain after the musician corps intervention. Now, when you have um, the, the tragic reality of, of a, one suicide a day of our returning vets, and you've got an intervention that's lowering depression and that's increasing relaxation and lowering pain, that's not a music or arts outcome. That's a public health critical outcome for veterans. And there's a lot of money going into that. Um, and I won't go over all this stuff, but it's been pretty exciting. Um, and it resonated. It's been resonant in the community. So these are just some of the headlines. And what's exciting about these to me is that they really pick up on different components, kind of the force multiplier of this. Is it a musical peace corps? Is it transitioning our schools? Is it soothing our sticks? You know, it's doing all that kind of stuff. And it's doing it by engaging the community. Now, um, our prototype went from that full that full-time model to then getting dissed by, guess who? My best friend, the thing that I helped create, AmeriCorps. Um, and, uh, and we didn't get the grant. So we had to pull back to um, our Bay Area community and diversify our product line, if you will. And we started doing these community-based, think playground build or habitat build, um, all around music and arts, so service and arts together. And that started to work. We also needed to you know, lower the cost of our program and couldn't afford to fund privately a full-time model. Um, so we did that for a couple years. Whoops. Uh, OK, well, you, that's, that's kind of a punchline. But um, oh, it went back. OK. Um, so uh, we, we had to, we did that for a couple years. And then we applied to AmeriCorps again. Um, and Winston Churchill said, uh, success is the ability to go from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. And we went again, and we got dissed again. Um, now, this is in everybody's face of like, oh, Kiff, oh, yeah, you know people in there. Oh, that's going to be done. No, changing, reframing something takes time. And also, we were learning this whole time, to be honest. You know, I can't always say we were totally ready for that. But our most recent funding, and I think really where we are right now is that we are focused on the power of music and arts to bring people together. And one of the things that's most inspiring about this conference is this whole idea that in education, that we're kind of swinging the pendulum back, not just from, from uh, you know, needing to drill and kill and focus on these content areas, but process is becoming product. That, that more and more funders are recognizing that we need to invest in innovative programs that are helping people to create the conditions for innovation and learning to actually happen. Conditions in schools, conditions in whole ecosystems, school systems like AmeriCorps and like what we're trying to do on the advocacy front for an artist corps, and conditions in ourselves. Conditions in ourselves so that we're willing to take risks and we're willing to fail and all the stuff that we've been talking about. And so I'm just going to make a little pitch for this idea of going from STEM. You've heard about STEAM. I think STEAM is great because it says us too. We're also important. Arts, science, technology, arts. You might be able to throw a few more letters in there because there's other important things. But I think what's exciting about the arts and what's different from it being just a content area is it is a practice. It's the creative practice. I think the design thinking thing is fine. It's with design doing. It's actually design practice. And design is not STEM. It's not math. It's, it's design. You might as well just call it art doing. OK, art doing. That's what we're all doing. We're art doing. We're just building cars, and we're doing these collaborative things. And so it's that reframing that needs to happen that's so exciting. And so you never know. I, I think of these different. Um, 
prototypes as really sort of standing on, somebody was talking about pivoting yesterday and leaving one foot. I think of these different, uh, like I always say to my staff, look, we're on lily pads, man. They're like, wait, we're doing that? I thought we were doing that. And I'm like, dude, we're doing this and we need to keep an eye on that lily pad. And that lily pad was the community-based program that just got funded by Irvine and brought us into Los Angeles. And that just got funded by Cesar Chavez Foundation. And are we gonna stop pushing for the, the big dream of, of a musical Peace Corps? Absolutely not. Are we gonna just focus on one buyer of our product? the government? No. We're going to go to artists, we're going to go to consumer facing brands and media and tech companies who also should be invested in a musical Peace Corps. But you know, if AmeriCorps just gave 5% of its existing slots and the Peace Corps, that would be 5,000 positions for skilled and trained musicians and artists to work as teachers and mentors and community care workers domestically and all across the world. And with that, I thank you so much. Woo!